Where is Peng Shui? Well, she's taking part in a foreign media interview, but guess what? They still don't believe her. The US passes legislation on Olympic opening ceremony night to spend not just 300 million, but 500 million on smearing China. Twitter ramps up the promotion of anti-China content. Another COVID positive European athlete complains about human rights after not being let out of quarantine. And Sean Hannity posts his most anti-China content yet. This is episode three of Reports on China's Beijing 2022 Quick Fix. Let's get reporting. Hello, 大家好,欢迎回到外美看中国,我是安博然. Hey you guys, welcome back to Reports on China, I'm Andy. First up, Chinese tennis superstar Peng Shui accepted an interview with French media outlet Li Equip on February 6. In one of her first interviews since Western media decided she'd disappeared last November. In the interview, she thanked those who were concerned about her before asking the media to lay off. She said, I never thought there'd be such worry though, and I'd like to know, why was that the case? There was a huge misunderstanding in the outside world following this post. I don't want the meaning of this post to be twisted anymore, and I don't want any further media hype around it. But Western media continue to ignore her requests. Australia's 7 News ran with the headline, Chinese tennis player Peng Shui speaks to Li Equip in first interview since sexual assault allegations. Despite her saying clearly, sexual assault, I never said anyone had sexual assaulted me in any way. I wonder what happened to believe all women. On the day of the Winter Olympics opening ceremony, the US House of Representatives passed a new piece of legislation earmarking a whopping $500 million to combat CCP disinformation inside and outside the People's Republic of China, among other things. The act, which they've called the America Competes Act, includes many other parts aimed at anti-China spending, including massive spending on ensuring Americans can study China's many languages outside of the influence of China's successful Confucius Institutes, as well as funds to promote democracy in Hong Kong. Mm, now we all know what that means. You can read the legislation for yourself by downloading it using the link under this video. Many Twitter users, including Daniel Dumbrell, have noticed recently that Twitter's been going overboard with their promotion and pushing of anti-China content on the platform. Daniel tweeted, For a few weeks now, Twitter's been exclusively promoting anti-China articles as recommended tweets. No positive story has ever appeared under the pushed, you might like tweets. I've confirmed the same is happening to many others in this coordinated effort to guide us on track. He posted four examples, but it's interesting to note that despite being helped by Silicon Valley, none of the anti-China posts received much traction. If you do notice any positive China content promoted under Twitter's You Might Like system, do let me know. Another COVID positive European Olympian is complaining of human rights violations because Olympics organizers refuse to let them out of quarantine while they're still returning positive PCR tests. Finnish ice hockey player Marko Antila's coach, Juka Jalanen, complained in a media interview that the player's food wasn't good enough in quarantine and that he's healthy and should be allowed to return to the village and compete, despite not having returned two negative COVID tests within 24 hours, as per the rules. We know that he's fully healthy and ready to go, and that's why we think that China, for some reason, they won't respect his human rights and that's not a great situation, the coach said. According to Reuters, more than 350 Olympics participants tested positive for COVID-19 on arrival in Beijing. Finland, with a population of around 5.5 million, has recorded over 500,000 COVID cases, which adds up to nearly 10% of the population. Unfortunately for Antila and his coach, the Beijing Winter Olympics don't afford people the human right of being able to infect others with a possibly deadly virus. Finally today, Fox News' Sean Hannity has broadcast perhaps his worst and most disgusting anti-China propaganda yet. Let's take a quick look, but I do warn you that much of what he says may upset some viewers. Yep, that's right. The hostile regime of the communist Chinese in Beijing, make no mistake, 
this is an international disgrace because of its vile communist dictatorship. China is a uniquely, well, awful, terrible place on earth. The vast majority of their 1.4 billion people, they live in abject poverty and squalor. And by the way, they're the lucky ones. China's ethnic minority Muslims, uh, the Uyghurs, they're forced to live in camps where they're used to slave labor, torture, murder happens, and one of China's star tennis players just disappeared. After accusing a communist official of rape, her claims were wiped right off of China's internet. There is no freedom in China. Now, I think most sane viewers will see through what Hannity's trying to do here, but make no mistake. It's reports exactly like these that are leading to the uptick in anti-Asian hate crimes across the USA, as if that country didn't have enough problems to deal with. This is not the sane analysis of a level-headed man. This is the desperate drivel of a country rapidly falling from their perch, acutely aware that their hegemonic days at the top are numbered. Now, the reason I played this clip here instead of ignoring it is because I feel like we need to be prepared for more reports like this in the days, weeks, and years to come. Tyrants do not step down without a fight. And Mr. Hannity, you should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, that's all I have time for today, you guys. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.